Hi, everybody. Dan Ullman, Mike Beer. We're in a celebratory mood here at DRF because last week we exceeded 20,000 subscribers on our YouTube channel. I want to thank our producers, Chloe and Lucia, for their excellent work, all the great handicappers and analysts that contribute to the DRF YouTube channel. And of course, I want to thank all of you who allow us into your homes and on your phones to watch the DRF analysis and let us talk racing with you. And if you haven't subscribed just yet, Please do so because join the party. We've got cupcakes, 20K, DRF. Mike, it's pretty exciting. Yeah, it certainly is. I got a, I got a cupcake too, in case you were, in case you were wondering, I got one. Um, yeah, I want to thank everybody for, for subscribing, Dan. I got to feel like most people probably join in because of you, Dan. You're a, you're a true professional. I'm happy to be working with you, and I'm happy people tune in. Mike, you're a very honest, and that's why you're a great handicapper, because you can spot talent. That's why he's the best analyst in the business. Thank you very much. 20,000 subscribers. Here's to 20K more. Hi, everybody. Dan Ullman, Mike Beer, the DRF Race of the Day for Saturday, April the 15th, race number 11 at Oaklawn Park. It's a grade one. It's worth a million dollars. It's a historically important race, the Apple Blossom. Let's take a look at this field. We only have four. Whatever happened to running for a million bucks? Uh, yeah, those days feel like they're they're gone. Dan. I, I don't know. You can usually count on the Apple Blossom, though, to pull a field. Uh, it, it didn't happen this year. At least we have Secret Oath and Clarier. They're two of the top uh, older Philly and mares in the country. Scan the QR code or click on it for Race of the Day access on your mobile devices. And you're absolutely right about the quality of the cast. Secret Oath, winner of the Kentucky Oaks last year, fourth in the Preakness. A filly that just seems to love Oaklawn Park. And, of course, Clarier, who's banked over $2 million in her career. Winner of the Ogden Phipps last year, the Cotillion. You know, these are talented, talented horses that might be compromised a little bit by a slow pace in a short field. Hot and Sultry is likely to show speed but she was inhaled by both secret oath and clarier last time yeah i don't i don't know you know if going back and taking a look at that as airy last time dan you know i don't know that you could really um look at that race and think oh well this time she'll get loose on the lead and it'll make a, a big difference i mean it, it just feels like the the one in the four in this race are kind of in a different league than, than are the two in the three Secret Oath, the number one. While she ran fifth in the Breeders' Cup distaff, she ran one of the better fifths you're going to see in Breeders' Cup history. She was hung out very wide. She was forced to go all in at the half-mile pole, and she had the lead up until about the 316th pole behind before tiring. Here in the Azari, her first start of the year, she settled off the pace, and usually we see a big push-button acceleration from her. She kind of snuck up on the leaders, and she wins very easily. The jock didn't have to go to the stick at all. Clary Air, on the other hand, who's just going to get up for second was kind of conservatively ridden at the back in behind horses and had to squeeze out late yeah i, I mean they both ran well uh in that is airy dan i mean certainly secret oath was was much the better that was a really impressive return to the races for her um but it's not like you know clear not like it was a, a performance from claire that makes you feel like oh she she just has no chance to turn the tables on her i mean claire Riar sat last she got in a little bit tight in the stretch she was not hard used uh, in the late stages of that race, getting up for a second. She could easily take a big step forward here. The number two is hot and sultry, and she still has a lot of upside. She's so lightly raced, a stakes winner sprinting this Oaklawn meet. They tried the Azari around two turns. She was up close to the pace. She finished fourth that day. Certainly no match for Secret Oath and Clarier. You know the plan in here. They're going to go to the front. They're going to try to drop the anchor and go as slow as possible and try to out-sprint everybody home. At worst, they just have to finish ahead of one to get a valuable grade one place. Yeah, exactly. You know what the plan is, Dan. Just put her on the lead here, um, see how far that she can take them. And maybe she'll get lucky. Maybe they'll just let her walk up there and, and the jockeys, uh, the one and the four, will fall asleep a little bit. Um, and, and it'll allow her to still be around at the end. It's a pretty tall ask, I think. I don't, she, I don't necessarily feel like she gets better with more distance, um, but I have no problem with them running here. I feel lead is up next. This horse was claimed for $50,000 last year. Finished an okay fourth in the fantasy behind Oaklawn loving Yugiri. Hasn't seemed to move forward, though, since that race. Here's her last start. This is a $50,000 starter allowance at Oaklawn going a mile and a 16th. She fell far behind. She is going to run on Lake for third. This running style doesn't help. Stepping up in class doesn't help, and she's not the best closer in the race. Yeah, there, there's not really much uh, she can do here. I mean, they might as well run her. If nobody else wants to run, Dan, and, and perhaps 
pick up a grade one placing. They might as well do it. She's in way over her head. Um, but listen, maybe this pace will fall apart a little bit and she can get third. Clarier finished ahead of Secret Oath in the Breeders' Cup Distaff. She didn't break great that day. She wound up near the back. The pace really heated up on the back stretch with Secret Oath, the nest, making early wide moves. And Clarier just missed in a good performance, and she gave her another usual good performance in the Azari. It seems as she's gotten older, they like to take a hold of her early. They like to settle back and make one run. Do you think they'll have to get a little bit more aggressive here, figuring the pace is slow and knowing that Secret Oath got the jump on her last time? Time. Yeah, I mean, they're going to have to obviously uh, try it a little bit differently here. I mean, I, I feel like you, all you have to do is go back to last summer at Saratoga, Dan, the grade two shoe It's a four horse field just like this. Nobody really wanted to enter. Um, it was her and Malathot. And so Rosario let this horse sit last, but she was right in behind that pace the entire way. She got through on the rail. She was easily better than Malathot that day. And I just feel like they got a rider just like that. And here, try to keep her within range and just see if she can take a little bit of a step forward here and kick down Secret Oath. Before we get to our top selections, please click the subscribe button on the Daily Racing Form YouTube channel for the latest DRF videos. Derby season is upon us. Here's our top pick for the Apple Blossom. Mike, you're going with Clarier to turn the tables on Secret Oath. She certainly has the ability to do so. Secret Oath just looked good last time out. Oakland's her track. Um, it's going to be a really good race between two quality fillies. Yeah, not going to be easy for, for Clarier to, to turn the tables this time, but it's not like it's impossible, Dan. This isn't really a bettable race as far as I'm concerned, but I don't think it would be shocking if it came 4-1 instead of 1-4. Only a four-horse field for the Apple Blossom, but two of the better Philly and Mare dirt horses in the country. Mike goes with Clarier. I'll go with Secret Oath in the Apple Blossom on Saturday at Oaklawn. Best of luck.